Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. So locally advanced pancreas cancer is a spectrum of patients that are clearly locally advanced and unresectable and have major vascular encasement. SMA is encased, the celiac axis is encased. And in those patients, there is usually not a likely potential that there will ever be any surgery prospect. There's the group in the middle where there might be a potential for tumor downstaging, staging. And then there's the, the group that is uh, between resectable and locally advanced called borderline resectable pancreas cancer. And that's a new entity. It's probably about 15, maybe 20% of patients with pancreas cancer. And there, there's uh, marginal arterial involvement or, or more uh, venous involvement, but uh, uh, a high potential for going on uh, to future uh, surgery. And to some extent, the treatment paradigm uh, depends on where one is on that spectrum. It also depends on the well-being of the patient and, and what the goals of treatment are. Um, in North America at this time, I would say increasingly the paradigm is upfront systemic therapy. And for patients who are fit and vigorous, combination cytotoxic therapy with either fulfirinox or gemcitabine and nap paclitaxel, recognizing that as yes, there's no randomized data for either regimen in the locally advanced setting. Although So locally advanced pancreatic cancer represents uh, approximately a third of the patients we see of uh, newly diagnosed pancreatic cancer. And locally advanced uh, unresectable pancreatic cancer nowadays is treated distinct from uh, borderline resectable disease. Because in borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, uh, those patients with neoadjuvant treatment, including chemotherapy and radiation treatment, especially with the modern chemotherapy of combination of agents like gemcitabine, nap, paclitaxel, or for Florianox, the ability to resect those patients is more than 50%, which is different than patients who have locally advanced unresectable disease, where resectability is really less than 10% or even less than 5%. Those patients' resection is not really a reality in the vast majority of the patients. Again, this is uh, dependent on how well we have uh, separated the two groups with good radiology and good experience in terms of knowing which one is, is which. So patients who have unresectable disease or locally advanced unresectable disease, those patients historically were treated with radiotherapy uh, with uh, concurrent with chemotherapy. And that was something based on some earlier trials, small patient numbers. That was at the time when, when also we didn't have good systemic treatments. For example, the combination of 5-fluorouracil plus radiotherapy was, was something which uh, patients uh, received when they were diagnosed with unresectable disease. However, nowadays, the, the paradigm has shifted into starting with good going systemic uh, treatment, which makes sense because those patients have locally advanced disease. They probably have a lot of cells which we don't see, and therefore systemic treatment makes sense as a upfront treatment try to deal with the metastatic disease or micrometastatic disease because we don't see it on a scan, but also trying to deal with the primary tumor and the local regional extension of the tumor. Now, if, if you take that approach, and then if you treat the patient for, let's say, four months with, with combination chemotherapy, gem, uh, gemcitabine, nap, paclitaxel, or fulfrenox, and then you restage the patients as you go along every two or three months, you will be able to see patients who have disease progression or they have disease spread to distant organs during that time. Those will represent maybe 20 25% of the patients, and those patients obviously are not candidates for radiotherapy. On the other hand, the patients who have stable disease or are responding, those patients you can then consolidate with the radiotherapy trying to improve the outcome of the patients. Because radiotherapy is not going to really help patients who have more widespread disease, again, more widespread disease that you cannot identify initially on, on your imaging. Uh, in my practice, I will give the chemotherapy for four to six months. And uh, in the patients, obviously, who have disease progression, we will change the chemotherapy and deal with that as we normally do. In patients who have stable disease or better, those patients, then I'll refer them to the radiation oncologist. And, uh, and usually we give them uh, 
uh, radiotherapy with uh, concurrent with uh, capecitabine, oral capecitabine. So that will be my my way of uh, handling those patients, and I can tell you that this is really uh, now uh, the majority of the of the uh, oncologists in this country are are doing that, and it's becoming more of the platform that we're using for clinical trials: chemotherapy first, and then chemoradiotherapy in patients who have stable disease or they're responding to the treatment. Then the decision comes up if a patient uh, would benefit from radiation, and this is analogous to the discussion in the adjuvant setting, it's an area of uncertainty. Uh, we have data from the LAPO7 trial that radiation doesn't add, but also doesn't, uh, it doesn't negatively impact on patients' outcome. And the incorporative incorporation of radiation may, in fact, help with uh, tumor regression related to vasculature. It may also provide an opportunity for being able to stop treatments or treatment break uh, for a patient. And as mentioned, uh, a small proportion, um, certainly a greater percentage of patients with borderline and more marginal vessel involvement may be candidates to go on to future surgery, although one has to acknowledge that the majority of patients with locally advanced unresectable disease uh, don't go to the operating room. So for patients with locally advanced disease who have progression, it depends where their progression is. For a majority of patients, it's ultimately systemic progression. And depending on the time uh, from which therapy was stopped to when they progressed would influence whether to resume the original treatment they had uh, or to switch systemic therapy or to consider a trial. Um, so for example, if a patient had uh, fulfirinox and then say had local regional radiation, and then a year and a half later, that patient uh, relapsed or, and developed metastatic disease. I think in the absence of limiting toxicity from neuropathy, it would be very reasonable to, to consider uh, resuming fulfirinox. If a patient, in contrast, had locally advanced disease and received fulfirinox, uh, and shortly after um, or on treatment had local progression and or systemic progression, then one would clearly want to switch uh, the regimen.